So uh, when Lenny first asked me to speak, he asked me to give an overview of text analytics and uh, do a, share a couple of case studies. And then later he told me it's uh, 20 minutes or less. So I've retitled the presentation uh, Snapshot of Text Analytics. And we'll be sharing just a portion of, of one case study. And uh, I'll just briefly today go over a little bit about where we are in text analytics now and, and why and the types of software that are available generally. And then I'll go into a uh, social media, specifically a discussion board case study, and then I'll end on um, how we can use text analytics in surveys, um, which could be mobile surveys as well, of course. So text analytics has actually been around for quite some time, since just after World War II, actually, when code breakers and uh, translation specialists uh, got to work on, on trying to put something together and solve the problem. And at the time, uh, it was very much an empiricist point of view, uh, summed up well by this uh, British linguist who said, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. Later in the 80s, uh, artificial intelligence became very popular and a lot of effort went into teaching computers how to play tic-tac-toe and chess and start learning like humans, learning languages like humans. And, uh, and that's when linguistics started playing a greater role. However, in the past five to ten years, we've really come full circle and back at a more empiricist point of view, where we're now allowing computers to do what they do best, which is, of course, pattern recognition, data mining, and so forth. And uh, that, together with the social media, of course, this um, huge unstructured data being added every day, has really uh, propelled text analytics. So if you think about the uh, discussions going on uh, that you're of interest in, and uh, the issues being discussed there are represented by the different shapes um, and uh, colors. The traditional approach has been to use human coding, basically some sampling. Uh, the problem with this, of course, is that you're going to overrepresent certain issues, underrepresent others, and miss, miss some completely. To say uh, nothing about uh, those you know, much fewer examples of comments, um, in which case it's best practice often to call them extreme outliers and just throw them out. Text analytics, on the other hand, is really a census of all the data in the universe. So we can get uh, very accurate and, more importantly, 100% uh, consistent uh, representation over time uh, of all the issues and you know, the frequency, uh, sentiment as well. And more importantly, um, perhaps also those extreme outliers can often be uh, new problems arising that you want to nip in the bud before they get any bigger, a uh, competitor launching something new that you weren't aware of, or, or other opportunities. So in terms of, of data that we have and we work with, uh, structured data is something that we're all familiar with. Um, this is CRM data often, Likert scales in surveys and so forth. Unstructured or text data is much bigger. It's, it's uh, in, information can range from news sources on Google to uh, the intersection, of course, with quantitative data, uh, which would include uh, things that we're familiar with, like survey data, where we have Likert scales and an open end. Um, and within the unstructured field, there is, of course, uh, social media, which is also text data and very little uh, other data associated with it. Um, the, the tools we have to use on these different sources, most of us are familiar with tools like SAS and SPSS for the structured data. Uh, now, we, there is also uh, text, text mining software, uh, Tensity, ClaraBridge, Odin Text, and so forth. And what uh, a lot of you are, are more familiar with, perhaps, social media monitoring uh, tools, which focus on blog and Twitter data. Um, a lot of data from social media, Facebook, for instance, is not yet available to us in, in text analytics and social media monitoring. So the uh, case study I thought I'd share parts of today is a, a discussion board um, deep dive into a discussion board called flyertalk.com. But what you'll see here can be applied to any uh, text analytics uh, project, pretty much with a few exceptions. Flyer Talk is a uh, extremely popular website for anybody who travels a lot. 
They have discussion boards for each of the American, um, major airlines, hotel chains, car rental companies, and so forth, where uh, people who uh, uh, travel frequently are sharing information. And there are well over six million posts on this site um, and over half a million unique monthly visitors. And uh, in this uh, project, we focused on the five major hotel brands and just one year's worth of data on those five discussion boards. And the first step of a project like this is uh, screen scraping or web scraping. And that's your computer going to the website and copying down the data of interest. Obviously, the comments, but also um, whatever other data that is available. In this case, we were able to get the username, uh, the date they joined the site, their location. So this guy, uh, Charlie, is from uh, South America. And he's a member of uh, Starwood Preferred Guest at the Gold Level and American uh, Airlines Advantage. We were able to get um, 19 demographic and technographic variables in total, other than the comment, from um, over 100,000 posts, uh, representing about 7,000 uh, unique posters. So the first step, again, um, in a project like this is just sort of understanding your data overall. So more data mining and text mining than, than just text analytics. And what we find usually uh, on sites like this that have been around for a long time and have a good sense of community is that a smaller group of the posters are responsible for the majority of the posts. So here we have 20% of the posters being responsible for 80% of the content. So they're the opinion leaders. And the majority have just posted once or twice during that one year period, as you can see from the chart. What you don't see in this chart, though, if you imagine that curve continuing, sort of like a long tail, are all those online introverts or voyeurs who are coming to the site, part of those six million um, or half a million unique monthly visitors who are just learning and, and reading and being influenced by those uh, top 20%. And here's another a slightly different visualization. And I know it's hard to see here, but the little blue dots represent um, well, they are the actual usernames, um, and on top we have uh, Hilton, underneath Starwood, and on the left we have Hyatt, and on the right Marriott and Intercontinental. So you quickly see, in terms of overall volume of these posters who have posted at least 100 times in the one-year period, which boards are most popular and the traffic between them. Zooming uh, out a bit more, here we're looking at just 200 posts or more. And uh, so these influencers kind of are in two groups. There's those who are more loyal to one brand, and they tend to be more positive generally. And then we have the connectors who are going between the boards, and they are usually more mercenary, talking about you know, how to get the best out of the different brands and their marketing offerings and so forth. Now, once you uh, have this much data coded using text analytics, there's a lot you can do. And often the first step is just understanding what are the top uh, verbatim issues or, uh, that are being discussed, and also maybe linking that to sentiment. So here we have um, payment process, bathroom, and furniture usually tends to be discussed more negatively on the boards. And in the middle there, transportation, food, and room is more neutral or tends to be discussed as much positively as negatively. And down towards the bottom, uh, spa, the point programs, um, promotions, and the health club tend to be discussed more positively. Now, this is, of course, much more interesting when we start comparing different brands. So we found, for instance, that whenever the bed was being discussed, it was uh, significantly more likely to be discussed positively on Starwood's uh, discussion board. And we expected to see that because They've invested a lot of money in their uh, Western Heavenly bed, Sheraton Sweet Sleeper, four points for comfort bed. We saw the same thing with their shower because of the Western Heavenly shower. But it came as a total surprise to Starwood uh, management that uh, Hilton um, had obviously invested quite a bit in their health club and um, as well as their lobbies. Both of these were uh, significantly more likely to be discussed positively on, on the uh, Hilton discussion board. Here is another uh, chart looking at uh, 12 months of data. And we've got all five brands here. And this is just looking at 
the verbatim concept or issue of promotions. So uh, we've got, um, and, and we checked, by the way, with the head of loyalty marketing at Starwood and said, is this what your promotional schedule look like? looks like? And she said, yes, indeed, that's exactly what it is. So isn't it nice to be able to look back and see uh, what else was going on in the marketplace, why your campaign did as well as it did or didn't do as well as it did, and maybe be able to predict that out into the future. Here we're looking now at Starwood mentions of promotions, both negative and positive comments. And as you recall, promotions are a positive, uh, generally being spoken about more positively. And what we found was that there's high correlation between positive and negative sentiment. And that's a good thing, because when that ceases to exist, then we see um, that there's something going on. And drilling down here, we found that, uh, in fact, this was due to their New Year's promotions, which, again, the uh, loyalty department thought was their best campaign of the year. Uh, one more slide here, looking just at negative sentiment. A lot to be understood here. We see the seasonality. Fewer guests in December and May, so fewer negative comments for many reasons. Fewer guests, but also when you have fewer guests, you can offer a better service. But one brand peaking there in March and May, Hyatt, and uh, again, uh, having us uh, understand that there's something going on and then drilling down, we found a couple major issues with a large property in New York, but more importantly, their online booking system was going offline at the end of the month. Uh, psychological content analysis and looking at emotion, a last example from this case study, Starwood has a full-time employee who engages in discussion on their board. And uh, because it's a discussion board, we were able to look and find all threads where he took part and separate them between uh, the discussion before he said something and then what happened to the discussion after. And we found that there was a significant increase in trust, less cynicism and distrust in conversations afterwards. There was an increase in cognitive complexity uh, due to uh, thinking about new information. And uh, we also saw an increase in task orient orientation, uh, indicating a respect for authority. So he was protecting and uh, serving the brand well there. So what you just saw is, is one example uh, of basic uh, exploration and tracking. And that's what most of us are operating at, especially if we're doing social media monitoring. But we can move up the, the value pyramid of text analytics to more advanced analysis and visualization, including modeling and simulation, including that structured data, uh, such as that in surveys, and, and feeding that back uh, into our marketing programs. So I want to leave you with a thought about uh, how we might be able to use text analytics better in surveys. Uh, I received this postcard from a hotel in Sweden, and a thumbs up, thumbs down on the front, and on the back, just one question. Is there anything we should know? Now, I personally, this is the only question I want to answer, and, and that's the way most customers feel as well. And they really do assume that we take the time to read these things, even though often we don't. Uh, text analytics does allow us uh, to do that, of course. Um, these are four questions off common customer satisfaction and, and fulfillment surveys. Um, out of usually a 20 minute survey, uh, what is your likelihood to recommend the product? What is your likelihood to try the product again? What is your overall satisfaction with the product? These are usually asked on a 10 point scale or what have you. And often there's an open end. Uh, please explain why you gave that rating or, or if you just wanted to ask the open end how satisfied or dissatisfied were you and why. And uh, just out of curiosity, if you had to select one of these questions, how many would select one of the top three to ask in a survey? And how many would select number four? Well, we were actually able to predict uh, questions one through three by just looking at question four with over 85% accuracy. But I think the real future, of course, is not necessarily looking at OSAT or NPS here on a Liker scale rating and managing to that, and not just looking at the verbal satisfaction. But the true overall satisfaction is, of course, somewhere in between these two. And we can also uh, have actual behavior as the target variable. And with online uh, e-commerce, of course, we're able to get a lot of more of this structured information. So I think that's the future. Uh, and where we're going in text analytics, looking beyond just the text 
and building more uh, interesting models. Thank you. Um, do we have time for some questions? Thanks, that was great. Um, can you talk about how you classify positive and negative comments and how much of that has to be taught in the coding? Well, sentiment is, uh, is an interesting issue, um, and there's different ways to approach it. Nobody's sentiment is perfect. The point with sentiment, though, is when you're looking at longitudinal data here, is, is not that how accurate it is, uh, whether, you, wh whether you're using a training, human training, uh, on, on data that's being coded by humans, or whether you're using rules based. It's the point that it's 100% consistent, which you don't have with human coders. So then, therefore, whenever you see a change that's significant, you know there's something uh, going on. So what was your data source? For this case study? Yes. Uh, this was flyertalk.com. Okay, so you didn't like go to like uh, TripAdvisor or any of those things, right? Uh, it's, it's a site that's similar to TripAdvisor, but okay. no, it's fly, web flyer, flyer talk. Do you find that this type of research kind of, instead of providing answers, provides more questions than answers? And, and maybe that translates into, I would think, a lot more um, research. Uh, it, it seems like it would tell you a lot of issues for your brand or your company that you might want to dig deeper into. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. It, it certainly does. Um, and, you know, um, and also, I would like to add that you know, text analytics is only as valuable as the data you're using it on. So Twitter, for instance, a case where you have lots of volume of data, but questionable value in many cases. Um, so it depends on how important the data is to you. That's why you know, survey data, customer service logs, uh, customer email complaints and suggestions have extreme uh, inherent value, whereas um, you know, Twitter uh, may not be as valuable for you in, in many cases, depending on your product. Uh, but certainly, uh, um, we found that, that uh, studies like this from discussion boards, beyond just giving us insight into the different product categories, also have given our clients ideas about the emotions and what's important to their target uh, dem uh, demographic and allowed them to create better advertising campaigns as a result.